of all of the Web3 primitives, blockchains, tokens, smart contracts, and wallets, wallets are by far the closest to regular users. It's the gateway between users and their assets and the center of gravity in Web3. So join me while I talk you through the what's, the house, and the why's of the world of wallets. Let's start with the basics. What are wallets? If you have a banking app on your phone, it's very likely that you have been exposed to the concept of wallets. There are applications that store your payment credentials, such as credit or debit cards, and let you perform various operations using those credentials. In Web3, what we call wallets is slightly different. Web3 wallets don't store your credentials. They store cryptographic keys that let you interact with assets that you own and that are stored in the blockchain. So why do they exist? We use real-world wallets to store various things. Money, keys, photos of our loved ones, banking cards, business cards, everything else. Similarly, Web3 wallets store the access keys to the digital assets we have on the blockchain. Cryptocurrencies, NFTs, credentials, etc. They also provide the authorization mechanism between those on-chain assets and other Web3 applications. In that sense, wallets are pretty much the keys to the crypto kingdom. And you and only you can make them work for you by managing its private cryptographic key. How many types of wallet exist? Wallets can be grouped into four different categories. Online or offline, software or hardware, self-custodial or custodial, for individual or multiple use. Hot wallets stay mostly online and grant easy access to DeFi, NFTs, and other dApps. This does, however, make them more susceptible to fraud and hacking. Cold wallets live mostly offline and are harder to use with DeFi or dApps, but that does make them more secure. Software wallets are normally only activated for transactions and can live both online and offline within internal applications. Hardware wallets are external devices used to store keys. They are only connected to the internet when being used to, for example, sell an expensive NFT. Custodial wallets are user-operated wallets, but the keys are held and managed by a third-party custody provider. Self-custodial wallets are directly managed by the owner, who holds and manages the keys themselves. Single-key wallets are used by individuals leaving the responsibility of security to the individuals themselves. By contrast, multi-key wallets have multiple approvers and have enterprise-level security. These are used mostly by institutions, funds, or DAOs. How do they work? You have to open your internet browser, go to the desired wallet website, download the corresponding app or browser extension, Request the creation of a new wallet. Write down the seed phrase that is provided. This is important. You don't want to lose this. And then you're ready to crypto. Every type of wallet has its own challenges. But most of them will require some degree of expertise in managing the software and parameters. Seed phrases can be hard to remember. Private keys are almost impossible to remember, and both require taking note of them somewhere else. Hardware wallets can and have been lost, and with it, the access to the corresponding assets. At this stage, a Web3 wallet is the access to services such as DAXs, where you can trade tokens. And if you want to find out more about that, we have another Explorers video on the topic blockchain-based games, where you can buy and play with NFTs, social networks, where it is possible to send and receive creator incentives and collect follower interactions, DeFi dApps, where it's possible to set up investment strategies across various digital assets, marketplaces, where collectors can trade their favorite digital art, metaverses, where users can play games and have immersive experiences, with many more to come. So, why should you know about this? 
First is because Web3 wallets are the center of gravity of user ownership. So we'll all need to understand the implications of becoming our own bank. Also, Web3 is poised to come to the mainstream with various industries from gaming to banking expanding their business models with Web3 primitives such as wallets. And if you're building for Web3, you need to know that the user experience of wallets is still far from ideal and more energy will need to be invested in creating increasingly less friction in their use. So, having an intuitive and secure wallet UX is how we will change the game for widespread Web3 adoption. And doing that will require a clear understanding of Web3 primitives, user behavior in each use case, and what it takes to build enterprise-grade software. Here at 11FS, we're eager and ready to help you navigate the space. In the meantime, stay rare, stay weird, LFG.